Are tanks obsolete? From what we've seen over the past couple of weeks, it certainly seems like tanks are going the way of the old horse cavalry. Nowadays, a soldier with a $100,000 missile can destroy a $3 million tank, so why even build tanks anymore? Well, let's explore the purpose of a tank and see if we can come to a logical conclusion. Well, a tank's job is to close with and destroy the enemy through maneuver, firepower, and shock. They were first invented during World War I by the British in order to break through the German static trench defenses. Now, back during that time period, there were armored cars. The British even invented these Guinness lorries, which is basically a first-generation armored personnel carrier that was improvised to help counter Irish Republican, Irish nationalist snipers during the Easter uprising of 1916. But those Guinness lorries ain't going in no trench. But a farm tractor? If you had a vehicle that was impervious to machine gun fire, that had caterpillar tracks that could get over those trenches, you could break through enemy lines and soldiers could exploit that gap. Now, I want to really emphasize how horrible World War I actually was. Imagine a Wembley Stadium full of men disappearing every 90 days. So the British were under a lot of pressure to invent something that would end this stalemate. Now the British Navy, under a young Winston Churchill, came up with the idea of a land ship. And this is why tanks use terms like hatch or deck to describe the vehicle. It wasn't initially an army idea, it was a navy idea. And the word tank was invented to conceal the true purpose of the weapon. It was just a water carrier or a water tank. Now, these original tanks were more like walking bunkers that could break through and do support by fire, as opposed to something that could break through and harass the enemy's rear. Now, these tanks really weren't all that reliable and they got stuck a lot, but the Germans really had no response to this tank until they took a darn elephant gun and started giving it to specialized soldiers. And that's how the Mauser 1918 13.2 millimeter anti-tank gun became the first anti-tank weapon. But what armies really needed was a vehicle that could break through enemy defenses, protect the crew with armor, but still harass the rear like horse cavalry. Now, it took a number of years to figure this out, but when they did, the Germans used it to great effectiveness during World War II in their invasion of France. The tank had finally come of age, and anti-tank weapons needed to catch up. Now, at the start of World War II, the French had passive defenses like anti-tank dragon's teeth and landmines, and even some active defenses like anti-tank guns. But it took until roughly the middle of the war for shape charge anti-tank weapons like the British Piat, the American Bazooka, and the German Panzer Schreck to be developed. But you had to be really close to the enemy tank in order to use these weapons, and really close is the last place you want to be when you're shooting at a tank. But the technology got better. By 1973, Russian-made, wire-guided Sager anti-tank missiles were employed so effectively by the Egyptian military during the Yom Kippur War that they devastated Israeli tanks. The Israelis were overconfident, unaware of the modern realities of anti-tank weapons, and they got a nasty surprise. Sound familiar? By the 1980s, tanks and anti-tank missiles had pretty much reached parity. I mean, yes, there were helicopter-launched anti-tank missiles, but for the most part, if you were on the ground, once you launched that missile, you were guiding that missile to the target manually. The tank didn't have to shoot down the incoming missile. It just had to scare the operator enough to get them to miss. Something amazing happened in the late 90s. Advanced, smart anti-tank weapons like the Javelin and the N-Law came on the scene. Now a soldier could shoot and just run away. And this is really hard to counter because previously tanks relied on either killing or intimidating the operator who was physically guiding the rocket toward the target. And you just can't intimidate a suicidal microchip. So are tanks obsolete in this new age of kamikaze computers? <sighs> you know, it's starting to look that way. Look, armies are always going to need mobility and firepower. That, that's not going to go away. And I also think that active protection systems, which shoot down enemy warheads, that could have a role in extending the useful life of armored vehicles. America and Israel have the trophy. Russia has the arena. Weapon, countermeasure. Weapon, countermeasure. Human beings excel at killing each other, and we've been doing weapon countermeasure ever since the first spear and the first shield.
Okay, so active protection systems may extend the life of the tank when compared to missiles, but what happens when they can start shooting down main gun rounds from other tanks? We might see armies moving more towards infantry fighting vehicles that carry infantry with them to provide cover and use a multi-purpose autocannon that will overwhelm an active protection system. We may also see a future where tanks become unmanned, where they're either fully autonomous or semi-autonomous. I mean, think about all the extra stuff that's on a tank just to provide for the crew's life support. You have to have fire suppression. You have to worry about nuclear chemical and biological threats. You have to have sights that the crew can see. You might even have to have video screens. Some tanks you might even have air conditioning. And then you need to put hatches on the thing, which are weak points, so the crew can get in and out. Ultimately, you have to make the tank big enough that the crew can actually fit inside the tank. How much lighter and cheaper would a tank be if you just left out the crew? So I could easily see a future where you still have tanks, but these tanks are robots with autoloaders, and these robots are either fully autonomous or semi-autonomous and controlled either from a workstation in Nevada, just like the Predator drones that fly, or they're controlled by a soldier sitting in an armored personnel carrier that's a couple feet away. Or maybe some kind of combination of robotics, local, and remote control. So I don't think that tanks are obsolete yet, but I think their design will probably change based on some of the lessons learned in this current war. There's still a lot of advantage in the speed and maneuver of armor units, so I don't see tanks going away anytime soon.